two markets that saw double digit year over year pricing increases and one market that saw only <laughs> single digit price increases. Then there's the market that broke a 26 month streak of year over year sales declines. If you're looking to hear about the Massachusetts real estate market for single family homes, condos, as well as multifamilies, then you're in the right place. This market's confusing. It's red hot, but yet there are signs that inventory is starting to grow. Interest rates aren't going down, but yet whole buyers are just flooding the market. It's going to be a crazy spring market. It's not a matter of if anymore. It's just a matter of how crazy is it going to be? Just in the last couple of weeks, a house listed at $700,000 sold for 872 grand. A house listed at $800,000 and sold for well over $100,000 over the asking price. I can cite example after example, but the big takeaway is that the Fed can't lower interest rates. If they do, the cost of housing is just going to skyrocket and that will only lead to more inflation. I hate to be the crazy one in the room, but the Fed, in my opinion, actually needs to be increasing rates. There, I said it. Don't shoot the messenger, because here's why. Real quick, my name is Jeff Chubb, and I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you're planning on buying or selling a home now or in the future, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, onto the single family market stats. In February of 2024, we saw 1,805 single family houses sell for an average sales price of $725,000. Another month where you can barely see the dot from last year. We were so close again. The 1,805 single family houses that sold in February was 1% off of last year's sales numbers, and we saw 1,824 units close. Last month, we talked about how the first chapter of sales numbers was going to suggest that the year was going to look, well, a lot like last year. Well, chapter two, it's just been written, and that story, it continues. Like we have said more times than we can count, sales and prices are not two factors that work in tandem. We know from last year that diminished home sales will not affect home values. Home values are tied to the inventory levels, not sales levels. This is not looking good for the crowd that's praying for own prices to go down. We ended 2023 with a 6.4% year over year appreciation rate. Now, two months down, we have now seen a year over year price increase of 9.8%. I'll say that again, year to date, we have seen home prices go up in Massachusetts by 9.8% comparing the first two months of 2023 to 2024. Wow. Okay, on to the yearly sales comparison levels. As we've already said, our home sales levels are pretty much on par with what we saw last year. These depressed sales levels are what we need to consider the new normal for as long as homeowners are, well, handcuffed into their extremely low interest rates. I know I'm one of those. Aside from 2023, we would need to go back to February of 2010 to see the general level of sales that, well, we're seeing today. So close, but no cigar. Again, the streak progresses of 31 consecutive months of sales declines. Now, I really thought we had this streak broken this month. It's not a matter of if it happens, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when the streak comes to a close this year. Closing in on nearly three years of sales declines. It's just insane. But as we know, because we've already said it, that doesn't matter because sales levels and pricing, they're not intertwined. 31 consecutive months of sales declines, while we have now had 44 consecutive months of price increases. From where I'm standing right now, I just don't see any way that this trend of home price appreciation comes to an end this year, which is just insane to think about. Not one month in the nearly last four years have we seen year-over-year -year prices go down, and that month that it did was May of COVID. Kind of makes sense. Prices are going to continue to go up and up and up because, well, all of this inflation, they're printing so much money. At this point, I'm worried they are going to go up too much and too fast again. And this is going to lead to additional rate hikes. Not rate cuts, but rate hikes. You heard it right. Inventory levels are up, but I wouldn't call this a surge of any kind. But yes, our inventory levels at the end of February 2021 was a four-year high. That's a great thing for home buyers. 
Our inventory levels are up 10.7% from February of 2023. And this was the last time when our sales were at this level. So our inventory is way up, but our sales are just staying level. But we still have 6.3 times less inventory than when compared to February of 2010, which before 23 was the last time we saw this amount of sales. This increasing inventory levels are a trend that we need to keep our eye on. The year over year wrap really gives you a better picture is what we're talking about in regards to the inventory growth. Now we started the year with the second lowest inventory level in history. We're now at the fourth lowest level in history. Inventory levels are moving up, but at the end of the day, we are still at historical lows. Why does all of this inventory talk matter so much? It's because inventory levels and prices are what are correlated with one another. As of today, we have 82 more homes on the market than the same time in 2023 and 807 more houses on the market than we did back in 2022. Quick recap. So sales in the single family market were off by 1%, while inventory was up by 10.7% when compared to last year's numbers. Last month's update, we were saying how it was extremely similar to the conditions that we saw in 2023. Well, this month, it's pretty similar, but the inventory levels could be a bit of a wild card moving forward, and that's what we need to keep our eye out. Now, prices were down month over month, but that's to be expected going from January to February. The year-over-year -year prices are a different story, however. Year-over-year -year prices were up 10.5%. February was a great month for Massachusetts homeowners. Now, we have the condo market as well as the multifamily market coming up next. But first, any chance that you can just do me a huge favor, can you hit that like button right down there? It just plays with that YouTube algorithm. It just makes a huge difference to me as well as the channel. And I just can't even tell you how much I appreciate you doing that. Now, for the month of February, we saw 895 condos close in the state of Massachusetts for an average sales price of $643,000. Let's start with the sales data. Well, how about them apples? I'm <laughs> such a great scenic goodwill hunting. I got a number. Anyway, we sold 895 condos in Massachusetts for the month of February. This was a half percent increase over the 890 condos that sold in February of 2023. This makes up for the 22% year-over-year sales decline that we saw back in January. And this also snaps a 26-month streak of year-over-year sales decline. So there's some celebration in the condo market. Year over year, we are right on target with what we saw last year. We would need to go back to February of 2015 in order to see levels in the same ballpark again. Are the condo sales levels pretty? Eh, not really, but they aren't ugly, and I'm, I'm going to take it. I've always felt that it would be the condo market that would see sales levels normalize first as being locked into a lower interest rate doesn't really matter for the condo owners who are husband and wife and live in a one bedroom in Boston while just getting pregnant with their second kid. Most people, they're going to have to move no matter what their interest rate is. Inventory levels in the condo market have also been making some much welcomed moves. Well, for buyers, that is. Inventory levels have been ticking up the last, well, quite frankly, handful of months and the trend, it continued in February. The inventory levels of 1,952 condos on the market at the end of February is a 16.8% increase in year-over-year -year inventory levels. It's also a 37.7% increase over the all-time February low in 2022. This is some additional welcomed news for condo buyers. So let's compare our inventory levels to 2015 when we last had sales levels that were of this amount, well, with the exception of last year, that is. Inventory levels today are only 1.6 times lower than they were back at that time. It's kind of crazy. And here's where you can really see the inventory growth in the condo market. The year-over-year -year inventory gap gives a better illustration of the increase that we've been seeing in the condo market for the last month. Now, keep in mind, the story in January was all about how inventory levels were going toe for toe with 2023. That's not the case anymore. We now have 148 more condos on the market than in 2023 and 407 more than in 2022. As a year-over-year -year comparison, sales were 
up by a half percent, but the amount of new listings that came on the market was up a lot. This year, we had 1,677 new listings hit the market in February, and this is compared to the 1,446 new listings that hit the market in February of 2023. That's a 16% increase in new listing activity, and it's exactly what buyers want to hear and why we've been seeing the increase in inventory levels. Sales are just not keeping up with the new flow of inventory. Yes, month over month pricing was down, but that is to be expected. Year over year, it looked pretty darn good. The average sales price of $643,000 was 6.4% higher than the average sales price in February of 2023 when it was 605 grand. Now, another strong 6 plus percent in year over year appreciation gains. Not bad, baby. We have had year over year appreciation levels of 6% for three out of the last four months. If inventory continues to go up and up and up, then you're gonna see a coming of this year over year appreciation gains as we move through 2024. And now for my very quick but shameless plug, if you're thinking about buying or selling a house, then please reach out to me today as it would be a true honor to help you and guide you through the process. Now onto the multifamily market. The multifamily market had another for eight month 2023 that was a black eye for the multifamily market well and it looks like that shiner starting to heal as we're going into 2024 because in february of 2024 we saw 316 multifamily properties sell for an average sales price of seven hundred forty seven thousand dollars. now another segment that had a year over year gain in sales levels that breaks a 20 month streak of year over year sales declines. The 316 units sold was a 6.4% increase in the year over year sales levels for February. This is celebratory news for multifamily property owner owners all over the state. The 316 sales puts us on levels of February of 2014. And this makes sense as it was 2014 sales levels that we had back in January as well. Now let's take a look at the inventory levels because inventory, it's up, <laughs> well kind of. There's a three unit difference between February of 2024 and February of 2023. So let's just call this year rover year inventory levels even. I think that's safe to say. The amount of new multi families coming to market though, that was up this year. They were up by 13% year over year as there were 523 newly listed multifamily properties that came on the market in February 2024 compared to 463 in February of 2023. When you compare our inventory levels today to those of February of 2014, then today there are 2.8 times fewer multifamily properties on the market than back then. And it was another great month though for multifamily pricing growth. Prices were up year over year by 12.3%. Those are some pretty strong gains. So far, 2024 has been a good year for multifamily owners. Heck, it's been a great year, let's not lie. This chart really illustrates exactly how good of a year it's been so far. We have now seen multifamily properties increase in value by 11% for the first two months of 2024. It's a favorable trend for multifamily property owners and one that I'm sure they are all looking to continue. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Again, it's Jeff Chubb. Whether you are looking to buy a home in the next nine or 90 days, it doesn't matter. I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone else that's thinking about buying or selling a property, then I truly appreciate you passing along my name and my contact information. There's no better compliment that I can receive, quite frankly. You can reach me at youtuberealestateagent.com or find all of my contact information right down there in the description section below. Until next time.